So here's the deal. I'm living in a world unlike the world I'm living in. Uh, and poets out there know what I'm talking about. So there's always this need to make things, to explain myself. And um, I ought to stop doing that. So anyway, in a matter of explaining myself, this is a collection. Try to see, try to hear these as part of a larger fabric, a texture of something larger. And I guess one way to do that is just let them flow over you. Don't think too hard about them. Don't feel you have to understand every jot and period and comma. Because uh, although, of course, they deserve every bit of that, and they were worked over enough, God knows, most of them. I wish I could say not, but some of them had to be crafted more than others. You know how that is. But anyway, they're part of something bigger. And to get at that something bigger, I think you have to let the ocean wash over you. Puss, shint, and cut, a litany of sounds long forbidden, I'll show you who's boss. Fool moon. Suppose you propose to those earnest profane poets you know to assemble all one night when the stars in their plenitude are aligned all in magnitudes far and near to the ear soon revealing soul shadows the moon has been concealing. And on that one night only a glowing key to what all here appeared in the midst, a purely magical thing hovering, a jewel gesturing thing, a discovering what in the world it's all about, a key that unlocks on that one mysterious night what so precious such profane poet preachers are clutching so tight. And suppose you were elected in all solemnity and with such assembled power as all their licensees together could drive you to approach that sacred apparition and in addition use it to fuse it right there and then with that bulging treasure chest at the end of their pens. And as the moon winced over your shoulder and katydids and peepers gasped, silence and fright, you sprung the hasp, and with all your might lifted the creaky lid of their just liberated language. And there, for all to see resplendent, the source of the powering of the energy flow of the course of the flowering of the synergy glow, do you know what you'd find? Why, it's enough to tax the minds and imaginations of junior high small fry, stacks of profanities all neatly assembled in chalk. You see, to be earnestly profane in poesy is to talk a lot and balk and balk. It's nothing much more than that, I'm afraid. And the moon paid us then and there its supreme compliment of light, tucking just out of sight to let the night be the night. The land of the ordinary. Gray day in the land, afternoon jaunt for Adele's kicking thyroid, very nice lady, rambling old house, a college town. Get to thinking about how the land is here. Don't know why in a new place it's always the trees, and then the dirt, the way things pile up on one another. Nitty gritties, I guess you'd say. Mostly it embarrasses me. Why can't I think of lofty things or simple history or architecture? Always instead how a back door hangs on its hinges. The slope of that wood pile, paint cracking on the clapboard, 
roof tiles, holes in the road. Mostly grunge like that, always been like that. Not just since raw streets of recent times either. Even Georgetown had its spells. I could name you the bricks. Why do I live in these old, old shoes? Why do I wallow so in the dreariest of things? Or maybe after all, it is only days long gray shadows. And then it flashes Wakabuck, of course. That's where the land became part of me. Always the tree to chop, rock to move, clearing to clear, a broken to fix. Life apart, a luxury, fitting in between times, where would I start? Screws of my hinges, grain of my log, grout of my pieces, tar of my way, roots of the branchings, firmament to fingers, my sanity of place. Of course I chuck out the lay of the land. The land's in the bones.